All right, this is the last part of 3-4. If you remember from the very beginning, when I talked about section 3-4, we said that there's three parts to it. Okay, there was no way that we were going to do the whole thing in one day. It's taken us at least three days, I think maybe even four days, um, to do this. So the first thing, what was the first thing we did? When they gave you two points, you had to find something. What was that first thing that we had to find? Find the distance, that's right. And then what was the second thing? We just went over it right before this. The midpoint. And then obviously now we're going to do what? The slopes. Okay, the slopes is basically this. This is not like a formal definition, but it's good enough for us. All right. It just basically describes what we're trying to trying to do. How steep is the line? Okay. That's what the slope is. It's just how steep it is. It's not how long the line is, okay? It's not the midpoint of the line. It's nothing like that. It's just how steep it is. And we measure steepness basically as a fraction, all right? That's how we measure steepness. So this is going to be a fraction. Sometimes it comes out to a whole number, but you can always write a whole number as a fraction, couldn't you? Like four. How would I write, how, how else could I write a four as a fraction? How can I write four as a fraction? Well, it's not a trick question. How can I write four as a fraction? Three? Why do you say three? The, the number is four. <laughs> I'm getting three, I'm getting two. If you have the number four, all right, I thought this would be quick and easy. All right, look, how, how could I write four as a fraction? Right now it's not a fraction, it's just a four. Put a line under it, just put a line under it. That's a fraction. Thank you. Four over one. That's what I was looking for. Okay. All right. No, you said three over one. No, I did not say Okay. So anyway, you could write it as a fraction. Agreed? Yeah. How else could you write it? You could write it eight over what? Two. Two. There's a whole bunch of ways you could write four as a fraction. Agreed? So how steep is the line? We're going to look at it as a fraction. If it does come out to eight over two, we're not going to keep it like that. We're always going to reduce it. So you would reduce it to four or just... You don't even have to put over one, but um, but every one that we're going to do, we're going to look at it as a fraction, okay, the slope. Uh, let me just draw a little line right here. So let's do that one compared to that one. Which one is the steeper one, the one on the left or the one on the right? The one on the left, okay, it's way steeper. If I'm climbing up a mountain, okay, this is what I'm climbing up right here, and then usually you get a good view if you climb up a really steep mountain. But right here, it's not a very steep part at all, all right? So it's not as steep, okay? It's not as slanted, right? Everybody understand that? All right. Now let's talk about, now both of these do have something in common. Because we talk about a positive slope and we talk about a negative slope. So these are both positive slopes. Because if I go from left to right, so watch, here I am, this is me, and I'm hiking. Boom, boom, there's my numbers, okay? If, yeah, I can, all right? I'm an accomplished climber. All right, so anyway, so I've, if I'm walking up this thing, from left to right, which direction am I going? Am I going up or am I going down? I'm going up, right? So from left to right, okay? I'm going up the slope, would you agree? Same thing here, I'm going what? Up the slope. Again, from left to right, we read left to right, everything we do a lot of times is left to right, okay? so. This is going up. So this would be a what kind of a slope then? It's going up. We call it a, starts with a P. Think math, think numbers, think numbers, <laughs> perimeter. It's not perimeter. It's positive. Thank you, I heard positive in there. Okay, it's positive slope. These are positive slopes. Okay, why? Because they're going up from left to right. All right, now, if I was up here, that would be going from right to left, okay? Right, but we're not going right to left. We're going what? Left to right. So that means we're going up. Now, how would I draw, so that's positive slope. How would I draw a negative slope? It would be going down from left to right. See that right there? Okay, so this would be a what? So from left to right, that means I would be starting up here, correct? All right? My arms are off my body. Okay, anyway, you get the idea. Can't even draw a stick figure. That's how bad of an artist I am, all right? So look, now you're going down. From left to right, you're going down. So what kind of slope is this? 
this is a negative slope. All right. Let's do another one. Right of pass. What if you had a slope like this? What is it? It's a regular slope. If I could grab this thing, why am I not? There it goes. Let's do that. Here's the. Uh, I don't know if you guys can handle this or not, but I'm going to try. I'm going to attempt to tell you a story or two that relates to this. Are you going to be able to handle it? It's just negative slope. All right. So uh, I used to I used to ski every once in a while. Not a lot. But every once in a while, maybe once every two years, three years, something like that, I would be skiing. I got to be pretty decent at it. You nice? Um, yeah, I'd be nice. <laughs> um, all right, so when you first get out there, you get your skis on and that kind of stuff, you don't just like jump onto a hill right away, okay? Usually it's kind of flat and you gotta like push on these poles right to get to a certain spot so here I am and then here's my skis out here like this okay and there's my arms okay these are the skis right here so if I'm not pushing and if there's no hill there's no steepness I mean well there's no real hill here is there okay it's just flat all right just horizontal it's flat how fast would I be going if nobody pushes me, I don't push on the poles, how fast would I be going? I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be moving, right? Agreed? Because there's no slant to it or anything. Nobody's pushing me. The wind's not blowing. It's not going to push me. Okay, I would be going zero miles per hour. So what kind of slope is this then? It's a what? Zero slope. Okay. It does have a slope. This does exist, all right? I mean, there's places where it's flat. And you just, if you just stand there and you don't push, you're not going anywhere. That's a zero slope. Okay, so when you have a horizontal line, horizontal just means flat like this. Everybody see that? When you have a horizontal line, what kind of slope is it? It's a zero slope. All right? So that's kind of easy. When you see a graph and it's completely horizontal, you know the slope is zero. All right? So we had a positive slope, we had a negative slope, we got a zero slope. What other kind of line could I draw that might represent a slope? Squiggly? That wouldn't be a line then. If it was squiggly, it wouldn't be a line. Lines have to be straight. Well, I went horizontal. Come on. What's the other one? What's the other one? A line. A line. Vertical. That's it. A vertical. Okay. So let's talk about a vertical line. All right. And let's talk about the slope associated with this. Here's my story. You want to hear my story or not? Yes. Okay. Are you going to actually listen to it? No. All right. So talk to the people around you. Tell them they need to listen or I'm just going to go right to the math. So when I was in college, I tell this story every time I do this lesson. I don't know if it's helpful or not, but anyway, it's just I always tell this story. When I was in college, I was in a thing called the ROTC. It's called the, I think it's called the Reserve officer training corps, something like that. Anyway, it's kind of like you're in the army, but you're not really in the army, right? You go to these, we got these events where like one time we like stayed out in the woods like all night long. They gave us an M16 with, uh, with uh, blank bullets in it, right? And we had to, we learned how to like take the gun apart, how to put it back together, how to clean it and all that kind of stuff. And we did an all-nighter one time, and we're, you know, we're this one little group trying to find this other little group and, like, ambush them and stuff. It was kind of fun. All right, we had different things like that. One of the times we went to, um, oh, my gosh, I forget it already. Oh, uh, VMA, which is Virginia Military Academy. It's kind of like going to West Point or the Naval Academy, that kind of thing. So VMA, and it was fairly close by where I went to school. So one of the things, we did a bunch of things. I mean, we did things like, how to learn how to salute correctly, right? Your arm had, your hand had to be at a certain angle. It had to, they taught us when you do it, you don't just go like this, okay? You had to like, like put your hand up and see how it kind of vibrates a little bit. Boom, that's how they said to, to salute. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and we learned, you know, a bunch of army kind of stuff. One of the things we did that was the most exciting thing on that trip was to go rappelling, 
You ever hear of rappelling? It means you're attached to a rope, right? We actually had a rope and we had a thing called a Swiss seat. So we would take a straight rope. It sounds like people aren't listening. So I'm going to stop my story in a second. We would take this rope and they taught us how to make a seat out of it. You ever see like rock climbing? Oh, I'm not hooked up to my microphone. This should be better. Sorry about that. So I don't know. You ever do like rock climbing on like inside rocks or something? They, and they, they have like a harness, right? They, you, you kind of step into it. You pull it up like this, right? And then you got this rope attached to it. We actually made our own harness, which is kind of cool, out of a rope, just a straight rope. Put it around, did this knot, blah, 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 and all that stuff. So we're up there. At first, we did a very small slope, all right? So the slope, we first, and we went down. We started at the top, so we had a negative slope, all right? So this was me. It wasn't really hard. You could almost walk down. But we were attached to a rope, and it was attached to, I don't know, a tree, or something all right there's your tree it was attached to it and we would go this way all right and actually our arms were this way <laughs> sorry hold up shh, shh, shh. sorry and we would go backwards and we just learn how to you you'd uh, hook the rope the rope was here but then you take some of the rope you put it behind your back and what you would do is if you would bring the rope up here it would put some slack on it and so the rope wouldn't be holding you, right? You would go down. Duh, 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 duh. So if you wanted to stop, you just take that rope, you stick it in the small of your back, boom, you would stop. It was pretty cool. It was a pretty cool invention, right? So you go like this, it would let out the slack, you go down the hill. If you wanted to stop, boom, you put it right behind your back and you would stop. So we learned how to do that on a small little hill. And then we graduated. This is all on the same day, within a matter of an hour, probably. Uh, then we went to this hill. This wasn't even a hill. It was a completely vertical cliff. At the bottom of this cliff were all these boulders, these rocks, right? So here's, here's the bottom. And uh, these rocks are at the bottom. So here I am at the top. And there's a lot of other people doing this as well. It was this way, right? Your rope is there and it was attached to something. I don't know what it was attached to. And what we had to do, we had to go backwards and you would go down here and you would let up on the rope and you kind of bounce, you would go, boing right here and then you bounce off it and come down here and then you go down to the bottom all right a lot of people were doing it the guys there were they were like real army guys the guys at vma they were like army rangers they were incredible dudes they would do here i'll tell you this they would do this thing called australian style rappelling or something like that and it was the craziest thing i think i've ever seen anybody do in person um they would take off running now they'd be attached to the rope Okay, I mean, they wouldn't just go off by themselves. But they'd be attached to their rope. They would run this way, like facing the, the cliff, as fast as they could. And then they would scream, all right? And they'd jump off of this, of this, uh, the top of the cliff. They would jump off and then they would, and they would hold onto the rope behind them and they would slow them down. They'd bounce here and then boom, they were down the bottom. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. And, um, we weren't going to do that, all right? Those were the guys that really knew what they were doing. But we were just going to repel. So all this to talk about the slope of this mountain, okay? And it was. It was completely straight up and down. There was no, no slope to it at all. So what you had to do is you had to, like, scooch down here, and then you would just let yourself down. So you're kind of at an angle now, like this, holding onto the rope, okay? the worst stick person I've ever seen in my life. All right, so anyway, that's a stick person. So you're here, and then they said that you wanted to be, here's a good math word, you wanted to be perpendicular to the cliff. All right, so there's me, there's my arms, there's the rope, all right, and it was attached to here. So they wanted you to be perpendicular. Everybody got it? Your feet are on the cliff, your, your head's out here, your arms are hanging onto this, and then after that, then you could bounce down the, the mountain, all right? Well, I could have sworn I was perpendicular, right? My feet were right at the level of my head, and the guy's telling me at the top, the dude at the top, he's like, let out a little more, let out a little more, right? Because he wanted me to be perpendicular, but I swear I was perpendicular, right? So I'm letting out more, so guess where my head's starting to go? My, heart, my head's starting to go here, and my feet are above me, so what do you think happened? My feet came out from above me, or from below me, 
and then my head is here, my feet are here, I'm hanging on to the rope, okay? I'm completely upside down, right? I'm up against the wall, and the guy at the top, he's like, he's like, and he's freaking out, right? He's army guys, they're all yelling and stuff, you know? And they're like, don't move, don't move. We're gonna be right there, don't move, right? And I'm just a little bit, I'm not that far. So I'm hanging upside down, my feet are completely above my head, everybody's yelling, and then all of a sudden, I see all these people, because the guy's freaking out, so everybody wanted to see what was going on. So all these people came to the edge of the cliff, and I see all these faces looking at me, and I'm looking at them, I'm up completely upside down. And then somebody said, well, were you scared? I wasn't, I didn't even think about being scared. I was so embarrassed that that's the only thing that I could think of is just being embarrassed. I'm like, there is no way in the world I'm going to let these guys come down and rescue me. And then, you know, I would just look like a dope. I was already looking like a dope anyway. I was upside down. Right. And so, um, so I'm like, man, I can do this. I, you know, they were getting their stuff ready. They were getting hooked up to come down and get me. I wasn't that far. I was just a little bit, just a few feet, you know, down below there. I was like, there's no way. So I was able to get my feet up against the, the rock wall a little bit. And I was able to, shh, listen, I was able to push, push a little bit. And I was able finally to push out far enough where I could get my feet. And now I was, I had my feet. So my head was here and my feet now were here like I was supposed to be. The guys are still yelling at me, no, no, don't no. do that, don't do that, don't right? Do that. And so as soon as I got like this, I didn't wait. I just let out on the rope a little bit and I went bang and then bang right down to the bottom. <laughs> the dude down to the bottom, now I didn't crash into the rocks. I mean, I went down pretty good, just like I was supposed to, right? If the dude at the top would have just let me go instead of saying, keep letting out a little more, a little more, I wouldn't have, my feet wouldn't have come out from under me. So anyway, the, there was a guy down the bottom, you know, making sure that, you know, we were okay and all that kind of stuff. And he said something like, he said, man, you had a rough start, but you got down faster than anybody else did. And I was like, yeah, you're kidding me. You're not kidding me because I, I was so embarrassed. I didn't want to be around there anymore. And so that was my experience with this kind of a slope. All right. So the guys was like, don't move, don't move. <laughs> and I moved. Yes, that's the way he was. Exactly. All right. So let's go back to skiing for a second. All right. So there's my story. I'm scared of going skiing. I wish I didn't have my camera then. I wasn't really taking a lot of pictures back then. Um, but that would have been pretty cool. Now, has anybody ever gone skiing, like snow skiing? Okay. Uh, they listen. Shh. Come on. So if you ever go skiing, they they kind of rate the hills, right? They rate them. Stop. Just listen to me. Just, why do I even try? I don't. I don't even know. I should have just taught the lesson. All right, so when you go skiing, they have like a, a blue dime, or the, they got a blue trails, they got green trails, they're kind of easy. The blue and the greens are easy ones. But then you go to the black ones, okay, and they, they have diamond shape, all right? So the black diamonds are the ones that are tough. They have like a, a black diamond one, a black diamond two, or a double black diamond, you know, that kind of thing. And they're pretty steep. I mean, you look over top of it, you know, and you're like, wow, I'm going down that thing. But it's still, you know, you're not going to, like, fly down the hill, all right? I mean, but will you ever have a black diamond where, here's your skis right there, okay? Will you ever have a hill on a ski resort that's completely straight down like this? No, you'll never have a hill like that, okay? So it doesn't exist. I mean, I know these cliffs exist, but the slope, right, on a ski resort, you'll never, ever, ever have a ski slope that goes perfectly straight down vertical. Would you agree? So you would never have a slope. It does not exist. In math, we say it's undefined. It's not zero because what kind of slope is zero slope? It's horizontal. That's completely safe, isn't it? All right. It's just, okay. So zero slope is horizontal. A vertical slope, vertical slope is what? It's what? Come on, say it. It's undefined. It's right there. I just circled. I just underlined it. Okay, it's undefined. 
There is no definition for it, okay? In fact, um, it does not exist, okay? It does not exist. It's not zero. A lot of people say, well, zero doesn't exist. Zero is nothing. Well, it's not really, okay? Zero is something. It's a number, right? You can add zero to something. You can multiply by zero. You can do stuff with zero, right? Undefined means it's not even a number, all right? So the vertical slope is undefined. So I could very easily ask you a question like this. I think they might on the homework. They'll say, what type of slope is that? What would you say? What type of slope is that? We got four. It's positive slope. That's right. This is a positive slope. Okay. What if you had a slope like this? What's that? Negative. That's a negative slope. All right. What if you had a slope like this? What would you say that is? That's a zero slope. And then what if, uh, where's my, right. And then if you have a slope like this, you don't even have a slope. Okay. If you have a line like this, what's the slope? It's undefined. That's what we say. We say it's undefined. Okay. Or it doesn't exist. Okay. So this is vertical. That's an undefined slope. That's a zero slope. That's positive. That's negative. All right. Let's do a word that you probably done a little bit of the slope stuff in algebra one. Did you? No. I think you did. I bet you did. I bet you did a little bit of this. I bet your teacher did. Whether or not you paid attention or not, it's a different story. Here's how we find how steep it is. Now watch. What we're going to do is we're going to do a comparison. We're going to compare. Listen. Shh. We are going to compare this distance. Oops. Let's try this again. We're going to try that. Shh. Guys, let's. You guys got the attention span of a gnat. I'm telling you, you can't. At you can't listen to anything. All right, let's take a look. So, if I wanted to, if I wanted to find out how steep this was, everybody listen. If I wanted to find out how steep this was, I could take any two points. Uh, let's do it like this. Watch. I could do it like this. I could take um, this to here. Ah, why did, let's try this again. Boom, right there. And then watch this. Okay. Look, I can take any two points on this line right here, and I can compare the up and down to the one that's across, and they're going to be exactly the same no matter what. I could take this one. Even though this is smaller than this one, the comparison... The fraction, that's what a comparison is. We compare one number to another number. The comparison of this side to this side will be exactly the same as this side to this side. Now, these are bigger, right? But when we divide them, it comes out to the same exact number. Everybody see that? Like this might be 4 over 6, right? This might be 2 over 3. Is 4 over 6 the same thing as 2 over 3? Yeah, it is, okay? Okay. So it doesn't matter what points you pick. We call this the yellow one. Make it yellow. We call this the rise. And we call the blue one. For somebody that's studied this before, what is the blue one called? If you studied this before, you should know this. Rise over what? Run. Okay. So you did hear this before. Some people have anyway. So it's the rise over the run. That is the slope. Okay. So slope is equal to the rise over the run. What does that mean? That means you take one point on the line right here and you wanna to get to another point right there. How do I get to it? You could rise. Now rise, we think of going up, right? But you could go down too, but this would be a negative rise and this would be a what? Negative, well, if I'm going to the left, if I go to the left, it would be a negative run. So what's a, po what's a negative over a negative? It's positive, and this is a positive slope, isn't it? Everybody see that? Or you could have gone the other way. Let's use a different color. So you could have done this. You could have started here, and you could rise about right there, and then you could run right there. It's the same thing, okay? That rise, that distance is the same as that distance, agreed? This run up top here is the same as that run right there. But this one is what? A positive rise, and this is a what? positive run, okay? What kind of rise is this? This is a what? A negative rise, and this is a what? It's a negative run. 
okay? Either way, positive over positive is what? Positive. Negative over negative is what? It's positive. Okay. So what we're going to do is this. We need, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to do this right here because we're running out of time. We need a little formula for this, rise over run. I mean, that's kind of our formula right there. It's very important. It's a very common phrase when you're talking about slopes, rise over run. Talk to anybody that's learned about slopes. Say, what's the slope? Almost everybody will tell you rise over run, okay? It's really important, but let's do some math. Um, what we're going to do is... I'm not going to go through that. I'm going to just I'm just going to show it to you. Okay. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot this. Uh, by the way, we have a letter that represents slope. It's kind of a weird letter. You'd think it'd be S for slope, wouldn't you? But they use the letter M, the letter M for slope. Uh, I've looked it up. People don't really even know the origin of the M, why people use M. It goes back like thousands of years, really. Okay. But M, it, I like to think of it as mountain, right? You, you climb up a slope of a mountain. Okay. So... It's not really what it stands for, but that's how I like to think of it. So M is slope, okay? So here's a formula for the slope. It's a fraction, right, because it's rise over run. Rise is going up which direction? Which direction is the vertical? Is it X or Y? Going up and down is the what? It's the Y axis, that's right. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the distance that you rise. How do I find the distance? Well, I just subtract, okay? How do I find the distance that I run? What do you think I'm going to do here? I'm just going to, what? Subtract. And that right there is my slope formula. So now let's do one example. That's all we need uh, to find the slope between two, or two points. Okay? Everybody write that down. That's super important. We're going to write it down here. In a, I'm going to write it down in a second. Just wait. Um, so here's what the question says. It says find the slope between these two points. All right, find the slope between, I don't, I'm not gonna write between, between one negative four and three, two. Oops, and three, two. All right, so we're finding the slope. We just learned a formula for the slope. Let's write it down. So the slope is, what is it? Y what? Y two minus y1 and then x2 minus x1. So there's my formula. Now up here, we've done this before. We've used this x1, y1 stuff before, okay? So I would call this one x1, y1. What would I call this point? x2, y2, right? So that's not different, right? It's just the formula that you're plugging into is just a little bit different than we've done before. So let's do this. I write a fraction and now I subtract the y's from each other. Hey, let's listen. I'm trying to talk. So rude. So let's subtract the y's. So y2 minus y1. So what am I going to put in here? 2 minus what? It's not minus 4. It's minus what? Negative 4. Good. It's 2 minus negative 4. I subtracted the y's. Now what do I do to the bottom? I subtract the what? The x's. All right. So let's subtract them in the same order. It's very, very important that you subtract the y's and the x's in the same order. Okay, so if I go the right one minus the left one, I have to go the right one minus the left one over here. So this has to be what? 3 minus 1. We're almost done. What's minus a negative? That's plus. 2 plus 4 is 6. 3 minus 1 is 2. Reduce it. Always reduce it. What's it going to be? 3 over 1 or just what? 3. And that's the slope. That's how steep it is. The slope is three. So every three you go up and down, you just go across one. That's what it means, okay? Now, your homework is uh, 13 to 22. So it's six problems, 13, well, it's actually more, I think it's nine problems, nine problems. Okay, so it's 13 to 22, and it's three, four, C. All right, that's your homework. Have that done. They're all just like this. They give you two points. You put it into this formula, and that's all you got to do. Okay, so go back to this video if you forget how to do it.